that's we going need to, live. Okay. All right. So um, tonight's class, we are going to be talking about herbal medicine cabinet or chest. You know, growing up in the bathroom, we had a mirror and it was made out of metal and you open up the mirror and there was the medicine chest. And if you had a headache or if you had a knee ache or if you had whatever, upset stomach, whatever it be, something be in there that would help for that. So I haven't used those kinds of products now for 37 years. I've not had an aspirin for over 37 years. I've not had Pepto-Bismol. I've not had Benadryl. I've not had any of those things that used to growing up. That was the go-to because I've chosen to go this direction and it works. It's worked for me and my kids. So we're going to go over it tonight. Now we're going to go through it pretty quickly, but y'all have got a sheet of paper here to uh, look back. So this time of year, especially a lot of people end up spring and fall having a lot of allergic reactions, allergies, you know, pine trees, mold, whatever it be. So do y'all know what panathenic acid is? It is actually one of the B vitamins and it's B5. That's what panathenic acid. And it can just help bring you out of one of those allergy crises if you get into it. And some people might take it regular like, you know, every day. And some people might just take it when they need it. And then if you're looking for that herbal antihistamine type of thing, there's a combination of herbs we have that is called F-O-U-R, four, the way you spell the number four. And that can be beneficial as well. Now, ALJ is probably, it's not listed here, but it's one of the most common ones that we use. We have it in a liquid as well as a capsule. And any of these things we're talking about, you don't need all of it. One of it would be the best thing, but everyone's a little different on what they need. So go to my website, click on the words product list, and you can alphabetically read about ALJ or 4 or panathenic acid. And there's a few others, but these are the basic ones we're going to talk about tonight. Now, I like the liquid ALJ a lot because liquids get into your bloodstream really quickly. I don't know how many of y'all have issues with animal hair and dander. A lot of people do. And let's say you don't have animals, you're fine, but you go spend the night with somebody or go over to their house and your eyes are running, your ears running, you know, you're having issues. So you can squirt the liquid in your mouth and in a very short period of time, you know, just a few minutes, you can see improvement with that. So the liquids do work quite effectively. So natural antibiotics, that is another thing we might look at. Something to fight infection if you needed to. If mucus is clear, that's just the body cleaning house of mucus. But if it gets colored, that's when you want to look at maybe a natural antibiotic, something ramped up a little bit more. So we have several of those listed here, the lymph gland cleanse, the CCA, garlic, that's one of my favorite, um, Siberian ginseng, echinacea golden seal. I think everybody needs to have echinacea golden seal, preferably in a liquid form, because a lot of times the stuff we have like that is above the neck you know, and so anything above the neck, if you put the liquid underneath your tongue and hold it there 30, 45 seconds and then swallow it, it's going directly where you want it to be in your head instead of having to swallow the capsule and it go down and get digested by the body. Does that make sense? Go ahead. I have a lot of clear because I blow my nose, especially in the mornings when I get up and it's just, and it goes on all day too. And nothing seems to I don't know what to do for it. Nothing seems to help. So let me ask this question. Have you ever taken vitamin C? I do. I have. I don't do it consistently. Do you take vitamin C three times a day? No. So you have some vitamin C at home. Yes. So this is what I want you to do for the next couple of days and see if it makes a difference. So I want you to take vitamin C breakfast, lunch, and supper. So I want you to take it three times a day, very consistently. Now, the amount you take 
needs to be to bowel tolerance. So try a thousand milligrams three times a day. If that doesn't loosen the stool, which it probably won't, then do 1500 milligrams three times a day. If that doesn't loosen the stool, then do 2000 milligrams three times a day. Slowly increase the dosage. If it loosens the bowel, then go to the dosage that didn't. Mm -hmm. But try that because many times the body's needing to clean house and it's doing it very slowly. And we want to speed that up and get everything on out of there and be done with it. So see what that How does. How long should I do that? Well, if it works for you. Okay. So do it as long as. As long as until. Yeah. Okay. So give it a whirl. Okay. It's, it's very easy. Okay. <laughs> you know, most people know what vitamin C is. There's no fear, you know, of it. <laughs> now, um, the other thing is a probiotic that can really make a difference. If we have taken a pharmaceutical antibiotic, you want to restore the good bacteria, but even with a natural antibiotic, it's not going to destroy the good bacteria. But a lot of times when people are going in this direction, they've tried all the other stuff and taken the other uh, pharmaceutical antibiotics. So we really need to restore the good bacteria in the gut and 80% of the immune systems in that gut. Bites and stings. Now that's really, really common. Lots of people that's going to happen at one time or another. So black cohosh, women think, I thought that's for your hormones. Well, it is, but it helps to deal with the effects of a poisonous bite also. And yes, you can take it internally, but you can also topically apply a lot of these. So the four, that combination we were talking about before being a natural and a histamine, many times that's what people do when they get a bite or a sting. Jojoba oil topically can be applied externally and then Thaithu oil. Now that's one of my favorite products. It's in a little tiny bottle. It is a blend of essential oils you can topically apply. And if you catch it really quickly after getting a bite or sting, many times it won't even whelp up or do nothing. So, a lot of people have that on hand. Didn't you also say charcoal? Charcoal is also another really good thing to put on there. You'd want to make a paste, maybe using aloe vera gel or something and topically apply. And then the nature's fresh enzyme spray. Now, more often than not in my house, when the kids come in with something or whatever it be, that's always what I have is the nature's fresh. It's, it's easier to just grab and spray it right on and then they recognize that in the house is their boo-boo stuff and I use that a lot for burns yes so, for burns it's awesome yeah. bites stings burns aches and pains I mean it's just so versatile it's crazy the nature's fresh ends up in spray now diarrhea that is something unfortunately people will come and go with and slippery elm is my number one favorite CLTX is a combination. It helps to calm and coat that intestinal tract. Slippery Elm is going to help to absorb that moisture. Probiotics, acidophilus is one of them to restore the good bacteria. Now, bentonite, that's a clay. Bentonite, we have the hydrated bentonite, but there it, you may find it sometime in a powder also. Now, don't do too much bentonite, but a little bit will absorb that moisture. And the other thing I use depending on the situation, because I have people that come in here and they've had diarrhea for two years. They've gone 10 times a day for two years. Now that's bad, but whole leaf aloe vera, not the regular aloe vera, but the whole leaf aloe vera sometimes is good in that situation when it's been a long time going. So, what, I mean, you slid it open and use the gel that's in there? We have a product called whole leaf aloe vera oh, okay. juice. But yes, what you're saying, if you had the plant, you would put the whole thing in the blender. Also, I've used, again, getting back to charcoal, I've used that for diarrhea too. Yes. If you use charcoal, if you can catch vomiting, diarrhea, just don't feel good, feel like you ate something, disagreed with you, if you can catch it, quickly in the first few minutes of that happening, first hour of that happening, take four activated charcoal, 99% of the time it'll absorb that toxin and carry it on out of the body. I, I love, I mean, it, it works in so many things. And it I, really does. Yeah, I take it with me, keep, you know, a couple 
tablets in my purse just in case. I'm That's right. Out. Even just painful gas. At one time or another, all of us have had, eaten something and it just gave you really bad gas and it'll absorb that too. Yep. I think everybody needs to carry it with them. I agree. So um, we were talking about infections before antibiotics, da, 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 da. But um, sometimes you have an infection and it's going to cause you to have like a fever or something like that. Catnip. Now everybody, you say the word catnip, they always think cats and it makes cats go crazy and all that. But catnip is an herb. We have it in a capsulated form that it really does help to lower a fever, but you can also use it in an enema form. Now, some people are not comfortable with doing enemas. I grew up with a constipation issue. Enemas were secondhand to me. And I would also do it with infants, my babies, when they would have a fever, instead of giving them Tylenol, I would just give them an enema and it'll lower the temperature immediately. So you've got choices. You got to do what you have a comfort level with. Vitamin C. We also have a product called Immune Stimulator and then potassium. Now that's not something people automatically think of, but it's very helpful to restore potassium level and that helps with the healing or the crisis that the body's got in, gotten into. And it's really good if you have had a loose stool for a long period of time to restore uh, minerals back up in the body too. So if you've had an injury like my grandson, unfortunately, this summer, at the beginning of the summer, he's 14 years old, and he was riding a four-wheeler with two or three other people, and it started raining, and they said, oh, we got to go faster, and they flipped that sucker, and he broke his femur, broke his femur. It affected the growth plate at 14 years old. I'm like, oh, my goodness, totally messed up his summer. So, if something like that happens to you, twist an ankle, whatever it be, an injury, definitely we're going to look at calcium, but the calcium needs to be very absorbable, which is not calcium carbonate. So we have a plant-based calcium called Herbal CA. It's not the only one we have, but it will help to speed up that healing process at a cellular level. And many times people have an x-ray and then they'll take some good digestible calcium and go back and x-ray to see how it's healing. And many times it's healing up. The doctor's amazed. I've had people say that. So that's one to consider. Then also capsicum, which is cayenne pepper. And of course that's helpful in injury to stop the bleeding internally and externally. And then licorice root, which helps with the production of natural cortisone to stimulate healing. Safflowers is one of those to help with the lactic acid buildup in the pain. A lot of people will have pain in this situation. And then PLS2, Roman numeral PLS2. That is one that can be used as a poultice. A poultice is you take the herb out of the capsule, mix it with something, aloe vera gel, whatever, and topically apply. And then vitamin E and coconut oil can also help with speeding up uh, the healing process and scars. You know, a lot of times if you have an injury or cut or whatever, you might want to work on uh, not having a scar. So vitamin E, coconut oil, and even that nature's fresh we were talking about before can be very helpful. So pain relievers. Now, you might say, well, I can take Tylenol or an aspirin. You can, if that's what you want to do. But I, like I told you, I hadn't had any of that in 37 years. So APS2 is what I've always taken as the natural aspirin. And one of the ingredients in there is white willow bark. And that's what they took the active ingredient out of that to make the first aspirin. Now, that's not the only ingredient. They've got valerian and other things in there that are also helpful. Wood betony is an herb most people don't know anything about, but it can help be a vasodilator. And some people, that's helpful in the headache situation if that's the problem. Feverview is most commonly used. And then valerian, as I said before, and even the IF relief, which is more in the inflammation category. So there's basically a few things that I think everybody really needs to have at any given time 
One of them is definitely aloe vera gel. I think everybody needs to have aloe vera gel, just like what Pat was saying. If you get burnt, you, you know, you get burnt at the beach, you get burnt on the stove. Any kind of thing like that, boo-boo wise, aloe vera gel is great. And it is a good carrier for any of this other stuff we're talking about, whether it be activated charcoal that we put on topically or whatever. Peppermint oil is very helpful with just tummy aches, settling your stomach. Um, when people say, why do you have that peppermint oil with you all the time? And I say, it's good for heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, nausea, gas, depression, breath, gives you a little lift, dissolving things. So it is good for a whole bunch of different little things. I just like it because it tastes good. Now, probiotics. Yes. <coughs> Go ahead. You uh, dilute the peppermint oil in water? Personally, I do not, but the peppermint oil that Nature Sunshine has, we have the straight peppermint oil that you would dilute or diffuse or whatever. This one right here has already got a little bit of an oil as a carrier with the peppermint oil, so it's not quite as strong. So personally, I barely touch my tongue to the edge of the bottle. I don't even have a drop. And it feels like I ate this huge peppermint patty in my mouth, right? So little dab of doo And this bottle will last like six months to a year because it's just, you know, you just do a little bit. I saw you doing that earlier. Is that you can see me do it a lot because it's my friend. I do it all the time. Four. Well, that's what I said. I just like the way it tastes. Oh, okay. Okay. But I also talk for a living and talking is very dehydrating and I drink my water. But when I put that in my mouth, instantly I have more saliva. So it's good for that too. But like say, you know, I do it a lot when I'm hungry because it'll stretch me further. I'm not feeling like ah, I'm so hungry. You know, same reason people would stick gum in their mouth. I don't chew gum. But a lot of people do. Okay, wait a minute. How's over here? Let's see. Probiotics. Um, of course, it's beneficial to restore the good bacteria of the gut. I think a lot of people um, are exposed to antibiotics more than they should. But also, some people say, no, I haven't had an antibiotic in years, but they drink tap water, which has stuff in it. They drink beef or eat beef and chicken that has stuff in it. They do have exposure to antibiotics sometimes and not think about it, even in its smallest sense. Xylobrite toothpaste. I love that. I use that all the time. And my husband, it's a really good example because he used to use Sensodyne for years and years and years. And when we got married, he said, oh, I got to have, you know, the toothpaste for sensitive teeth. And I was like, well, just try this and see. And when you put xylitol, which is a alcohol, sugar alcohol, in the toothpaste, and it doesn't have any chemicals or anything in it, it is even beneficial for those sensitive teeth. As well as xylitol is approved by the American Dental Association. It prevents tooth decay and all kinds of other things. So check it out, the Xylobrite toothpaste. But it doesn't have those skull and crossbones and say toxic if swallowed and all that stuff where your other brands do because they're actually not meant to ingest. And if you're brushing your teeth with it, of course, you're getting some of it in your body. Do you need to tell me anything? Okay, just I'm just recording you for the Facebook. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so Lobelia has so many different reasons. Um, Lobelia is relaxing. We think of it as a respiratory herb, and it is, but it's also good for the nervous system as well. And it's one of the first herbs I ever used on me, but then it's one of the first herbs I ever used on my son when I was trying to help him with his respiratory concerns as well. Helping to get mucus out. And see, if you do that vitamin C like we were talking about, and it works, super. But if it doesn't, Lobelia might be our next step to go with. Okay. But just go to my website, click on product list and read about that. See what you think. Now, tea tree oil. Mm. You see how many things that tea tree oil 
work zone, talks about coughs, congestion, sore throat, earache, sinus, muscle. Um, it's good for ulcers in your mouth, muscle aches. It's good for cuts, dandruff, itchy scalp. I think tea tree oil is really good to put in your shampoo. You know, just a little bit of tea tree oil and put it, shake it up in your shampoo, especially if you have dandruff or itchy scalp or whatever. It's excellent. So look at all those different things it can help with. Zillions. Awesome. So that's one thing everybody needs to have. And tea tree oil, you'll hear people say, well, is that the melaleuca? It is the melaleuca plant. Okay. We've already talked about the aloe vera juice. The whole leaf, more specifically, can be used externally, internally, can work on a lot of different things. But we also have the regular aloe vera juice. So it depends on how much of an astringent or tightening toning effect that you would want to have. So the whole leaf is going to be more astringent. Aloe vera gel, as we said, everybody needs to have that on hand. Silver shield. Now silver shield is a liquid and a gel. We have both. And in the gel, we also have a higher parts per million that we call rescue gel. But that also, I have a whole sheet of information of things that the silver shield does address. You know, the antiviral, antifungal, anti MRSA, anti all that. It's just awesome. You can put it directly in your eyes, directly in your nose. You can take it internally. You can warm it and put it in your ears. The gel can go in all these different orifices. It's, it's phenomenal. You say down here, wean yourself off. Of silver shield? Why? Well, a lot of people will be taking a large amount, like, you know, the... Pro yeah, well, that's what it says, four times a day, one week, and then... Right. So a lot of people are doing a protocol, you know, on the sheet that we have where it talks about malaria and limes and all that, they're doing, they're oh. slowly working up, they're getting to that maximum dosage, and then just like you slowly worked up, you come back off slow. Okay, now, if you're just taking a swig of it a day, that's no big deal. But if you've gotten to that maximum dosage for something specific. And also, it's not on the sheet, but um, I think on one of my sheets, it says don't take with salt or salty foods. Salt right? specifically or saline. And the saline is what I get more concerned about. Because a lot of times people will put a saline solution in their nose. Right. Don't put the silver in the saline at the same time, separate those way far away from each other because that is the only contraindication really for silver is salt. Because I read that, you know, one time ago and kept meaning to ask you. Yeah, hmm. that's true. Now, um, we've talked about the vitamin C and that's listed here. The one thing I want to say about the vitamin C, yeah, you know, the colds, congestion, all the other stuff most people know about, but it also helps your own body to make collagen and most of us our, our body has collagen in it but as we get older and with certain health conditions the body may be making less of it and as we get older we want to have the mobility of the joints and skin to be as soft and supple and not wrinkled and all that good kind of stuff and collagen affects your cornea of your eye it affects hair, skin, nails, bones, teeth, cartilage, tendons, ligaments. I mean, it affects a lot of the different parts of our body. So vitamin C can help your body in the production. Now, do we have collagen powder? Yes, we do. And you can take that. And I do quite often, but the vitamin C is something else. Distress remedy. Oh my gosh. So as I said earlier, we bought this farm, we have animals. Have y'all ever had an animal to get injured, but it didn't kill it? You know, maybe it got ran over by a truck, but it didn't kill it. Or you, it's, not, it's got a boo-boo. Many times the trauma of an injury can be just as bad as the injury itself and can affect people as well as the animal. So with this distress remedy, you can give it to animals. You can take it yourself. In the situation of a trauma or something, let's say you're driving down the road and you have a car wreck. Well, you might freak out over the car wreck. Some people do, some people don't. You could squirt the distress remedy in your mouth and within just a few minutes, 
you're calm. You can relax. You can handle yourself. So it's really, really good spur of the moment stuff. Would that work like anxious list? Similar to the anxious list. Now, anxious list is good to have on hand, but the distress remedy, you put it up underneath your tongue. Yep. Stress, injury, overextension, shock to your drop kind of a deal. Yep. Ultimate echinacea. That is a liquid. It has three different strains of echinacea in it. Um, there are some people that are not supposed to do echinacea uh, with a compromised immune system in some situations, but this, yeah, that's more autoimmune, but this can help to boost the immune system. So as long as you don't know that you have a label of autoimmune, you're fine. Um, we've mentioned ALJ already. Sinus support. I have a child who would get major headaches from sinuses, his sinus headache. But I mean, it would drop him, he couldn't do it. And he would take four sinus support three or four times a day and bam, he could get back to work, get back to life. It does have golden seal in it. It is gonna help if there is color to the mucus specifically, but it can also just be a very helpful tool for sinus congestion. B complex, which has all your B vitamins in it. If you take B complex, your urine is going to turn very bright yellow. That's normal. And it doesn't mean you're not getting anything out of your B vitamins. I've heard people say that. No, it's just the body is utilizing it. And when it leaves, you see evidence. And that's why you take vitamin C and B complex three times a day, most of the time, because you pee it out. It's water soluble every four hours. Golden salve. Oh, I love me some golden salve. I have used that since the very beginning with Nature Sunshine because we would call it boo-boo cream. I used it for breast cream when I nursed. I used it on any kind of boo-boo that the kids would get and I would get because it doesn't burn when you put it on. That's nice. But it's also totally natural and edible. So you can even put it on pets. You know, pets many times lick their wounds, but you know, you can put it on an area and if they lick it, it's not going to hurt them. It's all natural ingredients, but it is a salve. Um, LBS2, that's a combination of herbs. Not everybody needs that, but if you have constipation issues, you might look at it. Garlic oil, I think everybody needs to have that in their household because you never know when your ear hurts from like the wind right now is kicking up like I'll get out and it's cold outside. If your ear started hurting, you could put the garlic oil directly in your ear, put a piece of cotton in on top of that, do that right before you go to bed at night. 99% of the time you wake up the next morning, you're fine. Now, the only time you wouldn't put it directly in the ears is if you had tubes, but otherwise it's fine. Um, you can put it in both ears, one ear, depending on what's going on. But if you had swimmer's ear, you know, and your ears and your sinuses and your eyes are all very connected. So if you've got an infection in your sinuses, it doesn't hurt anything to go ahead and address the ears too. What about, what about the ears that create too much wax? I would do ear candling, but, but before I did the ear candling, I would put the garlic oil in the night before you candled the next day. Okay. And it would be good get more out. We already talked about peppermint oil. Stress relief is a combination of Chinese herbs that you might look at, especially if you have tension in your neck, shoulder, jaw area, TMJ, that kind of thing. A lot of people do have stress in that area, so the stress relief might be helpful. Solstic Revive. That is an excellent formula to restore electrolytes. So if you are, hopefully in January, you're working out and doing stuff and maybe you're sweating and you need to replace electrolytes, Revive can help to do that. It's good after a workout, after you play basketball or sports or whatever. Catnip and fennel liquid. I give this as a baby gift because one drop when the baby's screaming because it's colicky. And almost every child at one time or another in their life has had that problem. So you give one drop and it's amazing. You know, if they need to pass gas, that's what they do. If they need to burp, you know, wherever it's trapped, it helps to release it. Now it has other reasons, uh, things that it'll work on for hiccups and nausea and growing pains. And naturally it's high in calcium and 
hyperactive children and all kinds of other things that some folks use it for. But my favorite thing is a colicky baby, which nobody wants to be around a colicky baby because they're just screaming bloody murder. And the more they scream and the tighter they get, it, it gets worse. So catnip and fennel can be your friend. Liquid chlorophyll, I talk about that all the time on my radio show because liquid chlorophyll, remember chlorophyll is what makes green things green. This is a green liquid you can put in your water. And it, yes, I talk about it helping to keep mosquitoes from wanting to bite on you, but it's a natural body deodorizer, slightly good laxative. So it really works good on kids and somebody you're trying to help with a little bit, but it's a great blood builder too. And I get asked that question a lot because I had a condition called placenta previa, when I was pregnant with one of my kids, so it was a platelet issue, you know. And so I did a lot of the liquid chlorophyll to keep me built up in the blood, and it really did work. And what was your platelet issue? I had placenta previa. Do you know what that is? No. The When you're pregnant, the placenta should come out after the baby is born. Mm -hmm. Placenta was coming out before the baby was born, and that could kill the child or kill me or both of us at the same time. So you either have to have a c-section or sometimes it turns on its own in my situation it didn't so i had to have an emergency c-section but many times the blood will pool slowly it'll drip just a little bit at a time and it'll pool and then kind of come out all at one time that started with me when i was four months pregnant so it would start contractions way too early like you're going to miscarry so Placenta previa can cause a lot of issues. And that was with my third pregnancy. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Too many uh, platelets. What if the platelet levels are high? That's a different situation. These were low, but um, there are natural things we can do in that blood direction. Um, I'd have to test a person and do a consult and see. Maybe I can talk to you about that later. But yeah, but there's there are definite things we can do for sure. Now. We talked about charcoal already. It does have multiple, multiple uses as far as a poultice, as well as <coughs> taking it internally for all kinds of bites and stings and gas and vomiting and diarrhea, just no matter what's going on. I think everybody needs to have charcoal. And of course, today in the world we live, everybody's brushing their teeth to whiten their teeth with it. And they're doing masks to clean out their pores. So there's just so many different things charcoal can be used for. And Nature Sunshine's always had the capsules of activated charcoal all these years. We talked about the Typhoo oil, but we also have Typhoo massage lotion, which is really, really awesome topically. We have a bottle just sitting out in the shop so that if somebody comes in and they start to get up and they say, oh, my knee's bothering me, we just ask them to immediately put it on right there. Because within about five minutes, you can feel the difference in soreness, mobility, you can put it on elbow, shoulders, whatever it is. It has multiple, multiple uses. Um, it mentions here talking about um, things to keep on hand. And it's interesting for the last week, just this part of the yesterday and today, I've already had two kids come in the office that had constipation issues. And constipation doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's really, really common. So it talks about keeping on hand canned spinach, sauerkraut juice, and prune juice. Now that's in a mild situation. Now in a major constipation issue, that's still not going to work because I had the major constipation issue. And I tried all that stuff and that still didn't work. But you can't flush the toilet without water. Magnesium, vitamin C, aloe vera, things like that can also be used. Um, bone skin poultice, that's a combination of herbs that can be taken internally, but you can also make a poultice out of it. It mentions cream of tartar here. Of course, I don't sell cream of tartar. It's in the grocery store, but for sore throats, food poisoning also, um, putting it in water and gargling with it and different things like that, it can be a beneficial tool. So look that up, especially if you, if you got Pinterest, you can look up anything like that, medicinal uses for that. Um, a lot of people get cold sores, fever, blisters, things like that. And combination of herbs called VSC, we have it in a liquid as well as a capsule, L-lysine, it's usually one or the other of those, and then the Typhoo oil that we've been talking about topically applying it. Because a lot of times with a fever blister, you feel it before you see it. 
You know, you can feel the little tickle twinge kind of thing on the nerve. And if you'll go ahead and put the Typhoon oil or tea tree oil directly on there, either one of those can be a helpful tool. Um, it mentions viruses. I do pay attention to olive leaf and VSC medicinally. Also, um, you look at silver shield, virus, bacteria, all that kind of thing. Um, that liquid we had talked about earlier. The silver shield warmed. You don't ever want to put anything in your ears if it is not warm. If you put anything cold in your ears, it's going to hurt more. So the garlic oil, the silver shield, any of those things in your ears can be done. And then we have a combination of herbs called CBG extract. It is a liquid. And how to warm it. Don't warm it up on the stove. What I always say to folks is get the garlic oil or get the bottle of CBG and just kind of put it in between your legs while you're sitting there on the couch. And in a few minutes, it'll be the same temperature as your body. And that works. Now, if you're really having a problem with air pollution and, you know, in the past, Birmingham's been known for that. Um, Potty Arco and Enviro Detox herb-wise are something that you could take on a regular basis to help. But uh, if y'all go to China, which we went there in 2007, if y'all go to China, take something like that because air pollution over there is pitiful. Um, if we have a chemical imbalance, we might look at the Solstic Revive as well as drinking lemonade. It can be actually quite beneficial. Yeast overgrowth. Lots of people end up with yeast overgrowth. You kind of know that if you have a white coating on top of your tongue sometime, that can be an indication. Um, caprylic acid, podiarco, paracleans, a probiotic, maybe bifidophilus, garlic, tea tree oil, <coughs> any of those things would be helpful tools. Now, you don't need all that. Read about each of those. Go to my website, click on product list, and read about that. Now, that's not all of them that you can do, but that is a few. Migraines, some people deal with that, some people don't. But fever few, read about that, and you go, hmm, I didn't know that. Ginger, especially if it makes you nauseous, that's one thing to look at. Uh, fenugreek and thyme, you might look at that. Um, for the end of a cold, if mucus is not cleaning out, and again, um, we might look at that in your situation and try the vitamin C, look at the below beauty and maybe look at fenugreek and thyme. You know, all those are possibility. Um, now, one thing you do want to look at is capsicum is the very first product that Nature Sunshine ever started with. And it mentions a variety of things. Even if you just got a boo-boo on your finger that's bleeding and it won't stop, you can put capsicum on there. And people always say, now, does it burn? Yes, it does. But it helps with getting the blood to coagulate and just stop bleeding internally as well as externally. So you might have bleeding hemorrhoids or whatever it be. You could take it in that situation too. But if you take it internally, make sure you take it with food. Because it will feel like you'll feel like you drank a shot of whiskey. It's very hot. But if you take it with food, you're fine. So tell me about yes. the, the heart attack. What? Well, um, heart attack, stroke issue, you know, it has to do with blood flow and, you know, all that kind of thing going on. Now, you can't guarantee anything, but at the same time frame, capsicum <laughs> would be what I would take if I knew. Now, you call 911, you go to the doctor, right. no duh. But while you're waiting, taking something like capsicum would be what I would do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or if you have a liquid, put it underneath your tongue, you know, any situation. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Of course, you're going to go to the hospital and do what you're supposed to do that way. But there's always in the meantime what you're going to do. I'll never forget years ago when I had my trustful office, I had a guy come in there and he was sick, like couldn't get up off the toilet, just sick as a dog. So we called 911 because he was sick. Now, I didn't make him sick. He came into the shop sick. Well, when the 
ambulance got there, they thought I had made him sick uh-huh. is why he was in there. Cause you know, he's coming into our herb shop or, you know, and they said, what did you give him? And I said, well, I gave him some peppermint oil. What else did you give him? I gave him some charcoal. Well, neither one of those things would hurt him. And I said, I didn't <laughs> hurt him. He just came in like this and I called y'all because he's sick, really bad sick. So paramedics and things, people like that, know what activated charcoal is for because they use it in the hospital, pumping stomachs and all that kind of thing. And peppermint oil, I mean, people understand it's not going to hurt you, you know? So, but it helps settle stomach and his stomach was really upset. So I was trying to, trying to keep him from pooping everywhere and throwing up all over my bathroom. You know? ever find out what, what happened? To it's me? been so long ago. I don't remember, but <clears throat> You know, he got okay. Yeah. <coughs> so anyway, we're going to cut off YouTube. But if y'all know, uh, if you need my help, you can email me, Rhonda at RhondaDial.com. And you can call the office at 205-733-7000 if you 